I had the equation written before, 14 and 15 mm -hmm. equals a series of even moves. So any odd permutation can be written as a, as a product of an odd number of transpositions, mm -hmm. right? So if we, if we substituted any odd permutation into that side of the equation, we would have a contradiction because we can't, we can't solve an odd permutation with an even number of moves. Okay. Um, okay, so we have that exactly half the evens are possible and half the odds are impossible. So, all right, great. Just enough time to see whether I win a dollar or Matt wins a dollar. So, it's actually pretty cool that we can just, by looking at a board, figure out whether it's possible or impossible to solve. And the way that we'll do this is we'll, uh, we'll create one of those permutation uh, maps that I was using before. So, we see that one originally starts in the top left corner, and in C, the board that Matt created, it's in the 11 slot. So we have 1 through 15 first. So we have 1 going to 11. We have 2 going to 10. We have 3 going to 13. 4 going to 3. 5 going to 6. 6 going to 1. 7 going to 8, 8 going to 12, 9 going to 7, 10 going to 4, 11 going to 9, 12 going to 14, 13 going to 15, 14 going to 5, finally 15 going to 10. Alright, so that's one way to write the C configuration. So what we're going to do is we're going to express this as a, as a product of cycles. So we start with 1, 1 goes to 11, 11 gets into 9, and so on. So we have 1, 11, which gets sent to 9, which gets sent to 7, to 8, to 12, to 14, to 5, to 6, back to 1. So that's one cycle. Next we'll start with 2. So 2 gets sent to 10, which gets sent to 4, which gets sent to 3, which gets sent to 13, to 15, back to 2. So let's see if we have all of our elements. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, so that's our entire, uh, entire permutation. So we know that every cycle that's, uh, that's an odd length, an odd number of elements, is an even permutation. And every second How did we know that? Did we know that? Yes. I, I, didn't, I didn't prove it, but it's... Uh, oh, you're quoting another result. Okay, yes, good. yes. Good. Sorry. So, uh, as I was saying, an even length cycle is an odd permutation. So, this cycle, we have two, four, six, eight, nine elements. So that's an even cycle, an even permutation. And this, we have two, four, six elements. So this is, in fact, odd. And an even cycle and an odd cycle original format makes an odd permutation, which is impossible to solve, uh, and that's the talk. Thank you very much. I promise the odds were fair. I promise. Any uh, And so this generalizes to 5 by 5 and n by n? Um, yeah, so, I mean, the only thing that we have to do differently is create these these tors. So, uh, the original proof that all of the odd permutations are being impossible is the exact same. Um, the bottom right corner is blank, and you're, you know, you need to move up and down and left and right the same number of times for an n by n square. Uh, so, the only thing that we, you know, have to do, which I can show you later, is for a five by five, we have to create, uh, you know, potentially more tracks. But it is in fact possible to create. Um, however many tracks you need in order to keep these two elements fixed and move all the other elements in the, in the puzzle into the uh, 15 slot, which wouldn't be a 15, but yeah. Can you say something about the proof of that main theorem down there that every permutation we've written is a product, uh, that it has to be odd or even, it can't be both? Um, what, what would you like me to, to explain? Well, how would you how go about proving such a thing? Um, 
No. It's okay if you know. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure right now, but I could, I mean, sure. I could get back to you. Another question? Yeah, we're going to rectangle. So that's, I mean, this is a similar question to the, to the M by N. So you could have uh, an M by N where M and N are different. And, uh, and the real challenge, again, is to figure out these tracks, but it is, in fact, possible to figure out uh, tracks and then the other theorem. This theorem still holds because it's simply another N greater or equal to 3. And, uh, and the real challenge is, again, finding these, these tracks. Well, how about 1 by N? Well, 1 by N, you can't do anything because you can't move. It's false there. But any other okay. it's true, okay. right? Yeah. So. Is there any like three D version of this, like a Rubik's cube, but with the one yeah, I, like, sort of I slammed around? I, mean, I don't. I can't imagine that there, there actually is one because I don't know how you'd go about solving it. But uh, I mean, I was trying to think about how you'd create because again, the I mean, the issue for that is creating these tracks. Um, but I think you could create kind of like a multi-directional track system that that cycles the pieces. But or maybe I don't, on, a, on a torus or something. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I haven't been able to find one. One edge that comes with that kind of Yeah, thing. yeah. I don't think you need to. I think just the box is fine. Don't you think it's the same result? For a no, I, I do think it's the same result. I just don't think you could actually create the, the game because you can't move the pieces on the inside. Unless you have, like, you can unfold it and put it back together. Which I guess no, you could. I'll show you. I have one up in my office. Okay, sure. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All right. So, any other questions? Last question? Yes. Um, what if instead of having 15 pieces in the puzzle, you only had 14, and so the bottom two right spaces were open? Uh, then you could then you could solve any piece, any any configuration. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So if you have uh, other questions, you can talk to the speaker during the break, and let's thank him again. Thanks.